Today, I'm going to show you a method that I stumbled upon for taking photographs of my own work. It's a technique known as light painting. I won't attempt to do a comprehensive instruction here, but rather just an introduction to the concepts involved so that you can learn and adapt them to your own work. I personally have been a part-time professional knife maker and engraver for over 20 years. I find that taking professional looking photographs of my work can be extremely challenging at times. This technique though has made it far less challenging. So what is light painting? Well there are two distinct styles of light painting. In the first style the light source is visible in the photo and is the subject of the photo. For example here is a picture of Picasso creating this well-known photograph that he named Taurus. And in the second type, the light is used to illuminate the subject, as in this example by professional photographer Harold Ross, who is a master at this style. This is the method I will use for this demonstration. Okay, so where do we start? Well, the first requirement is a dark room or environment. The darker, the better. Pretty much any camera that has manual controls and the ability to lock the focus can be used. In use, the camera is set to a long exposure of anywhere from 5 to 30 seconds. Because we're using long exposure, the camera must be mounted on a tripod. The light source that you choose can vary anywhere from a cheap keychain flashlight all the way up to more expensive portable lights. Because my knives have reflective surfaces and are somewhat rounded, I have found that an iPad with its large bright screen works quite well. There are a number of advantages to light painting. It's possible to precisely illuminate specific areas of the scene or subject in order to direct the viewer's focus there. By selectively applying light, it's easy to create a sense of greater depth in your photo. And from an economical standpoint, the equipment is relatively cheap and inexpensive as opposed to hot lights or studio strobes, and there is very little to set up or take down, and there's no hassle of storing bulky lighting equipment. In practice, the workflow can be simple or can be very involved. In a simple workflow, you would compose, then light the scene all in one frame using a JPEG output. The problem with this method is that if you have a complex scene, should you make a mistake, you must start all over from the beginning. A complex but more precise method involves taking multiple shots that will be composited together in an image editing software to build the final image and to shoot the images in raw image format for best quality. This is the method that I prefer. One of my favorite tools for light painting is the iPad or the iPhone. Photographing shiny or reflective objects requires a large light source. Small flashlights have a pinpoint light source and don't work well with reflective objects. As opposed to an LED flashlight, the screen on the iPad is very large and very bright, and by moving it around it gives the illusion of a very large light source. While it's possible to just use the built-in flashlight app on the iPad, I have found a better alternative. It's an app called Softbox Pro 3.5. There are two main advantages to using this app over a regular flashlight app. The first is the ability of this app to set the white balance or color temperature of the light. The second is the fact that you need to double tap the screen to shut it off. Most of the flashlight apps will shut off with a single tap causing your light source to shut off in the middle of a shoot. This was happening to me over and over. To show you a typical workflow, I will demonstrate how I created this image. To be fair, I shot the individual frames for this image in RAW format and then processed them through Photoshop. I saved them as JPEG files in a folder so as to save some time in the video. A discussion of using RAW format in Photoshop would require a tutorial of its own, but there are many of them available on YouTube should you require one. To begin, I've composed my shot. I focused the camera, then slid the focus switch to manual. My camera is set to manual mode. I've chosen a shutter speed of 8 seconds and an aperture of f11. And I've set the ISO to 100 ASA. For white balance, I've selected shade, which should be a color temperature of around 7000 Kelvin. I like this color temperature because the iPad app has this as a choice and also because my keychain flashlight has a similar color temperature. Before I turn the lights out, I will run through a demonstration of how I manipulate the different lights for each individual shot. While I don't do it in this demonstration, it's possible to move your hand or body through the field of view of the camera without being recorded. The camera will record only what is illuminated. The first shot was done with the iPad, but the second and third shots will be done with the LED flashlight from alternate angles.
I will now take the shots with the lights turned off. I've slowed these videos down so you could actually watch what's happening and follow along. I'll now begin my second shot using the LED flashlight. And now the third shot using the LED flashlight once again. Now we have the three shots that will be composited back together to create this final image. Okay, I've got my images photographed and transferred to the computer. Now in Photoshop, I will select File, Scripts, Load Files into Stack. I'm presented with a dialog box that will allow me to select files that are already open in Photoshop or browse the hard drive for individual files. I'll click Browse. There are only three files that I need here. Select Open. Back at the dialog, just select OK. It's processing those files. I'm going to hit the F key to make the image go full screen. And resize this and uh, reposition it. The actual image that I wanted to be at the bottom, what I would consider the base image, is actually at the top of the stack, so I'm just going to click on it and drag it to the bottom. I'm also going to arrange the other two layers as well. I'm going to shut these top two layers off. Well, actually, I don't want the second one turned off, so I'll turn it back on, and I'll also click on it to make it the active layer. As you can see, when the active layer blending mode is set to normal, it hides the layers beneath it. Now this is where the magic of Photoshop happens. I'm going to select the blending mode for the active layer and set it to lighten. As I turn the layer on and off, you can see the effect of the lighten mode. The way the lighten mode functions is by comparing the pixels on the active layer against the pixels on the layers below it. If the pixels on the active layer are lighter, then they will be visible while the darker pixels will appear transparent. Let me just turn on the final layer and make that layer active. We will set the mode to lighten. Well, as you can see here, we had a little problem on the left hand side where my flashlight actually entered into the frame. Now that there is traditional light painting, not exactly what we're looking for in this image. Seeing that this exists on the edge of the layer, I can actually erase it using a layer mask. So with the top layer active, we go down to the bottom of the layers palette and click on the Add Layer Mask icon. Now, with the layer mask active, I will go over to the tool palette and make sure my foreground and background colors are set to black for foreground and white for background. Then I will select the brush tool. I'm going to go to the brush selection palette and select a smaller brush size, as well as set my opacity to 100%. Then it's just a matter of painting on my layer mask to eliminate the unwanted feature. One other change I would like to make, I'm going to select a larger brush and set my opacity to 30%. I'm just going to paint on this layer mask and clean up around the edges. One of the advantages of creating light paintings with multiple layers is that you can fine-tune each layer. When you compose everything in one shot, you lose that control. I think the light in this top layer is a little strong, so I'm going to select it by clicking on the thumbnail for the layer and playing with the opacity a little bit until I'm satisfied with it.
At this point, I'm pretty happy with the overall image. So I'll go up to the Layers drop-down menu and select Flatten Image, and I will also go ahead and do a final crop on the image as well. Just a little bit more there. Double click to accept that. And that's it, we're done with this image. And now I'll just leave you with some examples of photos that I've shot using this exact same technique.